Did you know that nearly 40% of all network outages are caused by iOS upgrades failing? In my experience, whenever there's a huge network outage, nine times out of 10, it's either gonna be some kind of, some kind of upgrade went wrong and they're gonna have to roll back, roll back the plan or whatever, or roll back the upgrade. Either it was a network component, like a server getting upgraded, or it could be a networking component where the network equipment was getting upgraded. And so that's to say that not necessarily the networking equipment or the hardware is causing the issue. It's these software upgrades and everything. So what I wanted to do today is just share, just give you a basic walkthrough of what I do as a daily routine for a network engineer as part of a project. and there is sometimes where i have to either upgrade the ios on a router or sometimes i have to downgrade and specifically today we're going to talk about downgrading a firmware version on a cisco 4000 series router and this is due to the firmware needing to be downgraded so that it's compatible with the network that this uh, particular router is going to be sitting on and as always i appreciate you for even clicking on the video and tapping in with me definitely subscribe to the channel because i'm trying to give you these videos and this kind of content weekly especially this kind because i did see that you guys do want to see more of the on the job training so Again, thank you for tapping in with me. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead with walking you through and we'll just go ahead and I'm gonna jump over to the desktop and everything. That way you can see me launch the putty session and I'll also be showing basically how I'm gonna console into the router with the console cable and all of that. You'll see that, all of that kind of stuff and we'll just go from there. All right, so boom, basically right here and I already have putty, it's a free download. If you want me to do a video on that, just go ahead and drop it in the comments on how to download Putty. But I'm pretty sure if you're tapping in with me, your computer's savvy enough to do that. So here's the Putty session. So what I have to do, if you've never opened Putty or whatever, you got a few radio buttons here for how you want to connect. SSH, that's a way that you can connect to networking equipment remotely, right? And in a secure way. Then you have a serial connection. That's what we're gonna to use today, serial connection. And then it's gonna fill in this part. This is COM1. What this is referencing, you're gonna to have to go to Device Manager. So if you go here, Device Manager, open that up, and uh, let me bring it over there. So this is Device Manager. It's basically your drivers and everything for your PC. I wasn't that good of an A-plus student, so don't get on me if I'm saying that incorrectly but either way what you need to do is go over here and you're gonna see all of the in this drop down for your PC ports com and LPT right here com 6 that's the number that you want right here so that's the number and that's what that's referencing so that's out of device manager you go back into putty com 6 you put that there you have all these different kind of settings like the speed to connect that Basically, it's 9600 for the baud rate, for the speed, for the serial connection. And then it's like 8-1 none. That's all I remember. And you can find all of that, what you're connecting at right here, I believe. Uh, let's see, serial. Right here. That's where all the settings are at. What COM port you're connecting to, 9600, 8 one, none is where I got that from. So 8, 1, data bits, stop bits. I have no clue. Parity. have no clue what any of that means. Just make sure that these settings, basically, if you're connecting to any kind of Cisco equipment, just make sure that these settings are correct. And right here that your COM port matches the COM port in Device Manager. I cannot stress that enough. I work with a lot of field techs that have CCNAs and they don't even know how to do this, which is basically login. And this is basic to just console into a Cisco router. I have to walk them through this same process. So don't be that guy or girl. Go ahead and if you can, if it's possible, definitely console in and just get familiar with starting a putty session. What I got to do now is just fire it up. You probably hear it in the background. And then through the magic of editing, I'll get back with y'all once it's all the way up and everything and we'll go from there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click open while this thing is booting up so you guys can see. So the putty session just launched here on my other monitor. I'm bringing it over here. 
So you're just going to see this blank session, but now you see some stuff happening right here. And at this point, this is where you want to break into Raman mode. And I'll show you everything that I mean by that and what we're going to do there so that we can downgrade the firmware version of what's going on. All right. So after I fired the router up and I inserted my USB stick into that USB port, the router started to boot up. And as you can see, right after last reset, cause power on, and then right underneath that, it was like main memory. And then there's those three dots. When there was those three dots, I hit and it was control function. And then the break button, those sequences. And that broke me into Rama mode. And the best way I could explain Rama mode is like safe mode for uh, if you're familiar with Windows. It's just another mode that you can boot into the into the operating system. It's very limited. There's nothing you can do in here. Look, your typical when you want to get into, let's say, a privilege exec, if you try to use that command to get into that, that command's not found. You're in a different kind of mode, but you're still within the iOS. I don't know the the exact technical definition of what Rama mode is, but I just look at it as just like a breakout session, just a different kind of mode rather than just going into the actual iOS or logging into the actual Windows environment. That's how I can understand it for for myself. So while we're in here in Rama mode and the whole reason why we're going to go into Rama mode is so that we can boot to our USB stick and on our USB stick we have a file that has a firmware version for this specific router and all we're going to do is boot to that file that way it then goes ahead and when it boots to that, it won't boot to the current firmware version that came with it. It will now boot to that file firmware version and then that will downgrade that firmware version and then we'll reset the router once it does that. It'll, it'll actually reset on its own. You'll see that whole process. And once it comes back up, then we will verify that it did downgrade and then that will be the downgrade of the firmware version. And then I'll also show you the current iOS version and I'll explain a little bit about upgrading the iOS version as well since we're only speaking about downgrading the firmware version. Hopefully all of this is making sense. If you're finding any of it useful, please give it a thumbs up. And let me just again summarize it and repeat it real quick because repetition that is how you learn everything. So the steps that we took, all we did was console into the router and then we broke into ROM mode which is safe mode for Cisco routers just another mode of the iOS that you can get into and all we're going to do is boot to a firmware version that's more compatible with the network that this router is going to go on and we're going to do that right now by putting in a command that will boot to that file on my USB stick that is plugged in to the Cisco 4000 series and then after that we'll move forward with the rest of the downgrade verifying the downgrade and talk a little bit about upgrading everything and then get y'all out of here Hopefully, again, like I said, the training is making sense and you're, you're gaining some kind of information. Definitely drop down in the comments if you got any questions, if I'm missing out on anything, if you want to see different stuff, definitely let me know. I'm trying to connect with y'all. You already know what time it is. So let's get back to it. All right. So now, since we're in here, we want to use the command boot B zero colon. Now, that's how that USB stick is recognized for this specific router. I don't know. There might be, maybe that's the default, how it gets recognized USB zero, but basically you want to find out however that router is recognizing it. If you want to do that, just stick the USB stick in there. It'll come up on the logs. This is before you break into ROM on mode. If you just boot the router and just while it's sitting there running, just stick a, any USB stick that you have your file on. If you're able to do that, if you're trying to, do this and follow along just stick your B stick in there and it'll come up and you'll you'll see it when we boot to the regular iOS instead of this ROM mode. So now once I once I tell it to boot, I'm telling it where to boot to the USB stick and now I need to point it to what file on this USB stick that I want it to boot to one once it recognizes the USB stick when during its boot process. So let me go ahead and put that file name in there that's on this USB stick. One second. 
All right, so right there, I've entered the file name ISR4200 CPL underscore CPL D underscore update underscore version 1.1, whatever. You see the file name. So that's the file that it needs to boot for me to be able to downgrade the current VMware version, which is higher than what I want it to be. So I'm downgraded to a lower version. So I'm going to hit enter right here. And as you can see, it's just doing its own thing. It's giving you some stuff. Do not turn off the power or reset the box during the upgrade. And this has to do with the CPLD version. And that's just a whole nother story for a whole nother video. All right, y'all. So we're back. This thing um, booted all the way back up on its own and everything. Um, as you can see, it took this long. It booted everything up. So now if you've ever logged into a Cisco router, it's going to ask you, would you like to enter the initial configuration dialog? You're going to put no. And then would you like to terminate auto install? You're going to put yes. Now you're going to boot all the way into there and we're going to verify that the firmware version is changed here from what it was. All right, so once I'm in here, I get out of user exec mode, go to privilege exec mode, right? With enable command. Then I need to know if the, if it took, right? So what I'm gonna do here is run the command show platform, or I put show plat. And right here is the firmware version that I needed it to change to. And it definitely did to 17.6.1. And then this is the CPLD version. But again, that's another topic for another time for another video. All right, y'all. So I definitely wanted to show y'all the directory or the file system. If you've never seen one for this Cisco router in particular. Uh, and this goes for pretty much any kind of file system for any kind of Cisco router that you may be in. If you need to look through the files that it has on it. So you can use the command DIR, which stands for directory. And then there's different file systems that you can look at MVRAM right here with a DIR MVRAM and then put colon because that's what's specifying what you want to look at, right? So here's the help options, right? And MVRAM is the directory. Sorry, it's specifying the directory. We got MVRAM. Here's the USB zero. That's my USB stick. Um, we got flash. Uh, if you're studying for the CCNA, these are these are flash memory, right? NVRAM is memory, non-volatile uh, RAM. So if you ever get your hands and you want to look at that file system and you want to look at what's in there, you would type in dir flash. And right here, you can see what's in the flash directory, right? And... I just wanted to mention that was downgrading the firmware version. If I wanted to upgrade the firmware version, what I would have to do is copy from that USB stick that's currently still plugged into the router. I would copy that upgraded iOS version, copy it over here with this command copy from the USB stick zero, whoops, zero colon. And I think it's ISR 4200 and then that universal K9. So I would copy that file, which is the iOS. And then where would I put it? Flash. I would put it in here in flash. That's where I would want it to go. So that's the command copy from what directory and what file you want. And then where do you want to copy to? See the help saying, where do you want to copy this file from this directory? Where do you want to copy it to? You want to copy it to flash? You want to copy to a FTP server uh, to MVRAM. Where do you want to copy it to? To another to the USB stick. You want to copy to another place on the USB stick. Where do you want to paste it? Basically, is how I answer that. So I'm gonna just put it in Flash, right? And then that's how I would do it. And then that would, if I hit Enter, it's gonna go through moving that file from the USB stick. But as you can see, that file is already on this router right there. So I don't need to do nothing with that. Um, clear that out. 
and that's pretty much it so i would copy it over there and then oh sorry and then if we look at the running config right here if we go show run section boot right here you have these boot commands and this is the, this is basically just like for a pc if you studied a plus it has a process like post it has to when it boots up same thing goes for a router it's just another type of computer right it's a network in the device but it still has to go through that same thing when it boots up it goes through a process and part of the process is saying where is the image or where is the ios that i'm going to use to boot into so that i can use everything all the features all the utilities and everything that comes with this system and that's what you're telling it here with this command and this part of the config that I've got sectioned out and where do you want it to boot to so I would enter a command boot to this file the file that I copied over there I would say boot to this file name boot to that file name and then I would hit reload and then I would reload and then when the boot process comes up it would go to the running config and be like, where am I at? Oh, boot. He says to boot to this file name and then it'll boot to that file name and be upgraded to whatever iOS version I needed that router to be upgraded to. Again, hopefully all of that made sense. I know it's a lot. I know I was all over the place. I'm trying. I'm trying to get this all on the job training. This is how you would get it from me if we had to sit down and I had to train you anyways. Um, so hopefully it... it some of it sank in if it didn't rewind the video watch it a little bit more again if it didn't still after that definitely leave me uh your questions in the, in, in, the, in the comments and i'll get back as soon as possible as 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 much as my time allows i'll definitely try to help out um or if you want me to do something else definitely let me know as well all right y'all that pretty much wraps it up now that you know a little bit more that a lot of your network outages are going to be caused by iOS upgrades, um, hopefully you can see by now why it's so critical to develop the skill of doing upgrades and um, more importantly developing a process around it, your own kind of process. Because I walked you through some basic steps that I take and the process that I'm currently following. but technology changes so fast there's going to be new processes that are needed all the time in the years to come so uh, just use this video to try to get ahead of the curve develop your own process on how to do an ios upgrade and try to implement it if you ever get the time to do it or the opportunity to do it and just build around that and build your skill around that and doing all of the research because there's there's other steps that you could take right um, that I definitely missed out you could double check your work or you could develop a rollback a rollback a rollback plan just in case the upgrade doesn't take for whatever reason you, there's other things that you can do there's also best practices that I'm sure Cisco has out there for when they want you to do an iOS upgrade if you got on with Cisco Tech which is uh, the technical assistance center for Cisco which is just like the Cisco gurus uh, quit, uh, you could think of it like um, what the genius bar for Apple or whatever right but all I'm saying is when you're developing your own process and doing your own research that's gonna make you the become that successful engineer because that way that stuff's gonna be repetition you're gonna be doing it in your sleep and you'll be where you want to be in no time Thanks as always for watching. Again, if you found anything useful, you know it's gonna help me out. So, and it costs you nothing, please go ahead and tap in with me, subscribe so you don't miss nothing else. And make sure you like the video and share it and all that there. Get me in them algos and all of that. I appreciate it. And I will definitely see y'all on that next video. Holla at me, peace.